Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining Discover Puerto Rico's industry update for the month of September. My name is Yamara Rodriguez and I'm the communications director for Discover Puerto Rico. During today's industry update, you will hear about the latest in research, marketing and sales strategies designed to keep momentum and continue generating demand. Before we get started, I wanna go over a few housekeeping items. Today's industry update will be translated simultaneously into Spanish. The slides we will be using are available in Spanish on our industry portal, discoverpuertorico.com slash industry, so you can download the presentation and follow along. Today's webinar is being recorded, and the link to the recording will be sent afterwards for your convenience. At the end of the presentation, there will be time for a Q&A, but feel free to send your questions as we go. You can do so by using the Q&A feature, which is the bubble labeled Q&A at the bottom of your screen. La presentación del día de hoy tendrá subtítulos o closed captions en español. Si usted desea activar la función de subtítulos en español, oprima en el botón etiquetado closed caption en la parte de abajo de su pantalla. Elija la opción que dice show subtitles para ver los subtítulos en español. Si desean ver el tracto completo de la traducción, pueden seleccionar la función que dice View Full Transcript. La presentación que utilizaremos el día de hoy está disponible en español y puede ser descargada desde nuestro portal de la industria discoverpuertorico.com slash industry. Además, el seminario web del día de hoy está siendo grabado y luego enviaremos un enlace con la grabación del mismo para que puedan repasar el contenido a su conveniencia. I want to remind you to subscribe to Discover Puerto Rico's industry portal so you can access multiple tools and valuable information such as research updates, digital marketing tools, and our multimedia library. You can also stay abreast of collaborations and partnership opportunities, special projects, and much more. Quiero invitarlos a suscribirse a nuestro portal de la industria. A través del mismo pueden obtener acceso a información valiosa, herramientas de mercadeo digital y nuestra biblioteca de elementos multimedia. También podrán mantenerse informados sobre oportunidades de colaboración, proyectos especiales y muchas cosas más. During today's industry update, you'll hear from our CEO, Brad Dean, Research and Analytics Director, Alicia Valentine, Director of Strategy for r and Partners, Sarah McFarlane, Chief Marketing Officer, Leah Chandler, Chief Sales Officer, Ed Carey, and Leisure Sales Director, Francisco Blanche. Now to get things started, I'll leave you with Discover Puerto Rico CEO, Mr. Brad Dean. Saludos from your DMO, Discover Puerto Rico. We appreciate you investing your time today as we work together to overcome the many challenges facing us and maintain the extraordinary recovery that's underway in Puerto Rico today. This constantly changing environment is certainly not easy for businesses like yours to endure. But as I consider our situation and look at our peer organizations and competitors, I am very proud of the progress that our organization, our industry, and our island are making. And while it's too early to declare victory, we are winning the war against COVID in part due to the leadership of our governor, our health department, and you by enforcing stringent protocols to protect the health and safety of our residents and our visitors. Our vaccination rate is one of the highest in the world, and that gives us a distinct competitive advantage compared to other destinations in the U.S. and beyond. And these milestones don't happen without leaders like you who are having those tough one-on-one -on -one conversations with employees and customers reinforcing the importance of wearing masks, getting vaccinated, and following all of the rules. And while we're proud of the progress that we've made in recent months, we recognize that the future pathway to prosperity is filled with uncertainty and challenge. I'm reminded of a lesson I learned early on in Puerto Rico, which stays to me to this day. I've always been fascinated with the skill and raw talent of surfers in Puerto Rico. They combine the strength of an Olympian, the coordination of a ballerina, and the bravery of a soldier. And it was so much fun watching from the shoreline that I decided to give it a try. Along with a few tourists, I learned the basic fundamentals of surfing in Luquillo, courtesy of a very patient duo of surfers. And after a couple of hours, I was able to stand up on the surfboard and ride that wave in. Now, the water wasn't that deep and the wave wasn't really all that big. 
and the wind and the ocean were pretty calm. But none of that mattered to me. I was able to stand up and surf the wave, and I was convinced that I had discovered raw talent to conquer the waves. A few months later, my family and I were on the western coast of Puerto Rico, and I decided to surf Rincon. I'll spare you the details other than to say I didn't exactly meet with success that day. The wind was strong, the waves were huge, the action was fast, and the level of skill needed to surf the world-class waves in Rincon was way more than what my limited experience would allow for. I spent more time at the bottom of the coral reef than on the top of the surfboard. And after a couple of hours of trying to surf the waters on the West Coast, I felt like I had fought 10 rounds with a championship Puerto Rican boxer. I learned a very important lesson that day. What got me up on the surfboard in Luquillo was not enough to keep me on top of the surfboard in Rincon. Now, thankfully for you, our tourism industry, and all of our partners, the team at Discover Puerto Rico is much, much better at sales and marketing than I am at surfing. And the ability of you and your DMO to ride the waves of this current travel environment is far beyond my skill to ride ocean waves. But this inescapable truth remains. What enabled us to set records in 2019 and lead the great recovery of travel and tourism in 2021 won't be enough to ensure success in the future. Where others see challenge, we must find opportunity. And where others are held back by uncertainty, we must rise together with boldness, with confidence, and teamwork. Together, we simply must continue to innovate, evolve, and improve in all levels and at all levels and in all areas if we want to continue to outperform our competition. Today, we'll share a few examples of how we're doing this through our core promotional and sales activities developed using the same consistent brand positioning and detailed research were yielding great results via recent promotion, which inspired travelers and expand our reach to new audiences. In fact, we continue to deliver results far better than our competitors and many peer organizations in the U.S. mainland, despite the current set of challenges we face. We've also enjoyed success with innovative campaigns like Population U and impactful activations like a premier food and wine festival attended by your DMO and a local chef. We're enjoying highlighting underdiscovered gems like the nautical wonders on the West Coast and our amazing cocktail culture, while celebrating historic milestone like San Juan's 500th anniversary and the grand opening of Distrito T-Mobile. Our sales team continues the blistering pace of dozens of events and activities while building the future sales pipeline to record levels, and at the same time, scoring four major milestones, hosting a premier event by PCMA, landing Connect Marketplace, which will be the largest meeting and convention planner familiarization tour in the history of our island, and being named a finalist for two huge events that could elevate Puerto Rico's status on both the national and the global stage. None of this happens without great partners, and we're delighted today to be joined by one of the brightest mar marketing minds in our industry, Sarah McFarland. Sarah and her colleagues at R&R Partners, working closely with our stellar award-winning marketing team at Discover Puerto Rico, are delivering extraordinary accomplishments. Today, you'll hear more about how we've evolved to new trends in travel and tourism by targeting a lucrative audience of travelers that align perfectly with the strength and needs of our island. Just one of many examples of how we continue to innovate and evolve while responding to changing trends in travel and tourism. As I look to the future, I'm confident in spite of the challenges and uncertainty we face. With the investment of federal funds to protect and grow our tourism industry, we are very well positioned to continue the record pace of recovery. And early next month, we'll be sharing details of those planned investments so that you can build our efforts into your 2022 business plan. And with an exceptional team of DMO professionals who are passionate about our island, talented strategic allies like r, &R partners, and local businesses like yours that are determined to overcome whatever adversity may lie ahead, I could not be more excited about the future. I'm certain the best days of our tourism industry in Puerto Rico lie before us and not behind us. Now my pleasure to turn the presentation over to our Director of Research and Analytics, Alicia Valentine. Thank you, Brad. As always, over the last year and a half, things have changed pretty significantly since our update last month, but things really change even faster than that. Earlier this week, prediction models released by the CDC indicated that 
Cases would continue to drop across the U.S. through March with children expected to become eligible to be vaccinated and no other variants on the horizon. Well, yeah, this morning there is news of another new variant, R1, but the CDC is currently saying that it's unlikely R1 will overtake the Delta variant, and we've seen those cases drop pretty consistently for the past two weeks. So with this, we anticipate more results like we've been seeing for the past five months. Between April and August, we have not only had the most lodging demand of those months, but also the highest rates. So with that, there's been over $880 million in lodging revenues this year, a 30% increase over the previous high in 2019. This shows the year-to-date revenues for hotels and independent rentals for the past seven years. We've talked extensively in the past of how the rental market has grown. And while this continues to be a significant part of the industry's success, you can see here that even hotel revenues have increased from 2019. But because hotel demand is actually 1% lower through August, it's because of higher rates that hotels are able to generate this revenue growth. The revenue per available room took a dip in August, but the rev par for Puerto Rico in July was $224, 67% higher than the Caribbean average. And this was the second month that rev par had exceeded $200, a mark that had never been met before June. Pre-pandemic, Puerto Rico's rev par was consistently below the Caribbean average. And you can see here that throughout the year, we've been running anywhere from 27 to 104% higher than the region's average. So last month's rev par of $178 was 56% higher than the region's average. Again, Puerto Rico typically runs below the Caribbean average. So no other competitors are seeing the hotel rev par higher than 2019. While Puerto Rico's hotel rev par is currently running 62% higher than two years ago, the Caribbean average continues to lag. And I'm sure you noticed on that previous slide that Aruba's, Aruba's rev par actually has been running higher than ours for the last couple of months. Well, it's typically even higher because they are not yet back to 2019 levels. We know the rental market fared better than hotels worldwide throughout the pandemic, but again, Puerto Rico's performance outpaces the rest of the competition, with RevPAR increasing by 84% against 2019. And across the Caribbean, that rental RevPAR has increased 61%. The U.S. Travel Association and Tourism Economics recently released their August travel data report and updated the Travel Recovery Insights dashboard. So nationally, July travel spending was 6.5% below that of the same month in 2019. Now, this is a significant improvement from past months in the pandemic, with 19 states and territories now having fully recovered or surpassing 2019 spending levels. But the report notes that Florida and Montana, both with 14% growth, have seen the most significant increases among states. But it's Puerto Rico that's outperformed all of them and is now running 34% above 2019 levels. And our future hotel and rental booking data points to Puerto Rico continuing to lead this recovery. Though we did see significant slowing throughout August as the Delta variant impacted consumer sentiment around the virus and the safety of travel, our pacing above 2019 is holding. And through the remainder of the calendar year, both hotel and rental reservations are outpacing the same time period from two years ago. But there is a significant drop off in the booking pace in January. The first quarter is currently booking below the same time frame from two years ago. But this kind of booking pace with more travel through the rest of the calendar year than two years ago, but a drop off in 2022, is aligned with the recent Longwoods International Research. In this week's release of their travel sentiment study, Longwood shows that there's been an increase in consumers planning to travel between October and December since August when Delta variant cases had peaked. But with increasing interest in short-term travel, consumers are not yet focused on those longer-term plans. 
So Discover Puerto Rico has been able to lead the island's recovery as we've monitored the research for the past year and a half, really making adjustments based on current circumstances. And much of that was focused on understanding a conscientious traveler. So here to tell you more about this approach is Sarah McFarland, the Director of Strategy at Discover Puerto Rico's creative agency, r and Partners. Thanks so much, Alicia. Um, yeah, let's jump right in. In the past year, travel really has taken on a new meaning. As Alicia just showed us, folks have been willing and eager to travel, willing to spend. But that same trip a couple of years ago just wouldn't have held the same emotional weight. It wouldn't have felt as important or as meaningful. Coming out of the last year, people still want to be with their people when traveling. And this includes children, their quarantine, team, their bubble, those they hunker down with during lockdown, and immediate family. On the flip side, they're less likely to travel with those who are at risk of contracting COVID-19, those with a different view on the pandemic, and friends and family outside of that quarantine. And our desire to be with those closest to us has even strengthened. 71% of folks say they plan to travel and visit loved ones they haven't seen uh, because of those restrictions or health concerns caused by the pandemic. So we're seeing this palpable tension between two core needs when traveling. This need to live and enjoy life and get out there and be free. And the very real need to keep oneself and one's loved ones safe. In this quote from Bruce Hood, a PhD in psychology, he says, nothing is guaranteed, but I believe the crisis has us more mindful of the fragility of life and the need to spend our precious time more carefully. We can also see this play out in the recent news about the great reset, the great resignation, building back better, et cetera, where folks are re-examining their lives and how they want to live them moving forward. And travel can be a big part of this evaluation filling key emotional needs. It's an emotional anecdote or a remedy from the chaos of our daily lives. It allows us to break away. And for many, travel is forward-looking, exploration, connection, it provides choices, a feeling of escape, of freedom, and ultimately travel is about you. So because of the recent global pandemic, consumers have emerged seeking more meaningful travel, connection with their companions, cultural encounters that broaden their horizons and create unique, unforgettable experiences. These are high-end consumers that have saved money during the pandemic and aligned to the island's offerings, that unique beauty and cultural spirit. Providing the DMO with an opportunity to target these individuals as a way to build back better, promoting responsible tourism, dispersion and diversity of product that contributes to local quality of life. Before, a DMO's success was defined by numbers, and today big numbers are looked upon by distrust and worry from the locals. Tourism is not a goal in itself, but a powerful means to build community. In other words, ask not what locals can do for tourism, but what tourism can do for locals. So how do we incorporate Building Back Better into our plan? We're gonna incorporate Building Back Better into our strategic plan through regeneration, on the next slide, dispersion, respect, localhood, diversity, education, culture, health and safety, and ultimately that quality of life. And redefining our success means attracting travelers who are redefining their own travel aid success. This rising group of travelers recognize the importance of travel in their lives beyond social media likes. These discerning and appreciative travelers know that travel is a privilege and not a right. So research last year began to highlight the emergence of this more conscientious traveler and their evolving priorities for greater cultural understanding, healing, and that deeper connection to the world. These travelers also have a greater desire to explore lesser known destinations in the year ahead. They want their travel choices to support the recovery of the destinations they visit and wanna see how spending will go back to supporting those local communities. They're increasingly willing uh, thinking twice about their consumption and waste while they're on vacation, with more than half willing to reduce waste and recycle while traveling, and nearly 70% looking to the travel industry to support that growing interest in sustainable travel. So four key travel trends have evolved during all of these dynamics. 
the longing to not just visit nature, but truly experience and connect with the open outdoor environments is a strong calling after lockdown. Travelers also desire more intellectually fulfilling and authentic interactions that offer education, history, and culture. The need for connection while traveling means creating meaningful memories and an opportunity to truly appreciate the people and places around them. These thoughtful travelers also seek the chance to regenerate themselves and reflect on their own impact on the world. So to contextualize this traveler type, there are layers of values and behaviors we're gonna point out in the following slides. In short, these four dimensions of the conscientious traveler, eco-friendly, nature lover, learning traveler, and bonding traveler, make up the total conscientious traveler. To further define the main audience, the conscientious traveler is summarized as someone who is discerning about their journey, willing and able to be home away from home longer, appreciative of their surroundings and people, and less reckless in their spending. Here we understand the conscientious traveler on demographic and psychographic level. There is opportunity here since only 5% of the conscientious traveler audience has traveled to Puerto Rico before. And most importantly, this conscientious traveler is 21% of the total market. A few key callouts about our conscientious traveler. Overall, they're passionate and fun loving, looking for unique experiences and a meaningful connection to the world around them. You'll see some themes. They plan more, they research more, they're actively engaged, and they believe that travel makes them better humans. So over the next series of slides, we're gonna unpack each of these sub audience groups. Again, these are the dimensions that make up the total conscientious traveler, the target traveler. And as we walk through the different dimensions, it's important to remember that humans are not one dimensional. They're nuanced and fluid. And at any given moment, we may feel more strongly about one thing or another, but by rooting in those shared values, we can connect with them in a way that speaks to their core identity, which is so powerful. So our nature lovers have a deep, soulful appreciation for the outdoors. They enjoy things off the beaten path to explore and be at one with nature. After spending so much time indoors during lockdown and restrictions, more people are craving those wide open spaces and being in the great outdoors. It's no surprise then that the pandemic has introduced more Americans to parks and open spaces. In a way, it's given them a renewed appreciation of nature. In fact, the US Travel Association found that 69% of Americans have expressed renewed appreciation for the great outdoors since the beginning of the pandemic. An example of this can be seen by looking at the national parks. Since restrictions of ease, national parks have seen record visitation. Freed from domestic travel restrictions, Americans are flocking to national parks in record numbers. And this trend is expected to continue. Research from destination analysts shows that nearly a third of those traveling soon plan to visit outdoor oriented destinations. Next, our learning traveler wants enriching experiences. They view travel as a means of academic fulfillment and they wanna gain perspective and knowledge. These guys consider themselves a forever student. It's more than museums and art, it's local culture that sparks intrigue. They might even try to learn bits of Spanish before visiting Puerto Rico, just to be able to feel a part and maybe participate in a local atmosphere. Education-based travel is any sort of trip to a foreign destination where a traveler takes part in activities designed specifically to educate them about history, language, culture, or any number of facts about the destination and is gaining popularity. In fact, the UN Tourism Organization estimates that between 35 and 40% of tourism today is represented by educational travel. This isn't a growing trend uh, among individual travelers. There's actually a plethora of educational tour companies, old and new, the Smithsonian Journeys, National Geographic Expeditions, Road Scholar. All of these types of organizations have the goal of offering educational vacations to feed those travelers endless curiosity. Our bonding traveler segment uh, is also looking for enrichment, but more in a human to human connection form. They see travel as the anecdote to isolation and disconnection, attentive customer service, and a feeling welcome in the destination is incredibly important to these travelers. 
The past couple of years have left us with a slew of postponed or canceled celebrations that need a do-over. Travel is the ultimate avenue to meet new friends and bond with loved ones. And travel is the activity that Americans have missed the most in the past year, with many saying their first trips will be to connect with loved ones and create those meaningful memories. And rather than traveling to crowded cities and major tourist attractions, these more meaningful travelers are looking for things like smaller destinations or something off the beaten path. It provides them with a more intimate experience to enjoy and truly appreciate the people and places around them. People don't generally miss landmarks, crowded shuttles and lines, lobbies packed with tourists. Mass travel is really just a different form of isolation. You're anonymous, herded around with other travelers, never really experiencing the people and culture of a community. So what people want from travel now is that what they've been deprived of, spending that meaningful time with their family and friends. This audience will seek out the hidden gems of Puerto Rico and search for the story behind them. And this is how they relate and connect to the destination on a deeper level. Lastly, our eco-friendly traveler segment wants to limit their impact on the environment. They want to know how they can leave the destination better than they found it. These travelers feel a responsibility to be better for the greater planet. And we need to target them with personalized travel tips that cater to their eco-friendly values and behaviors. They might eventually serve as many influencers among their circle of friends, advocating that Puerto Rico is a friendly destination for the environmentally conscious. As travel was put on pause this past year, many destinations went through a period of reset. The idea of traveling for good started to flourish as many destinations saw an abundance of wildlife and nature returned to areas that were previously impacted by over-tourism. In fact, many in the travel industry are starting to see the trend of a more sustainable traveler, someone who thinks more carefully about where they go, what they choose to do, and how that might impact the destination's environment. When it comes to US travelers, 73% think sustainable travel is crucial a sentiment that seems to have grown much stronger since the start of the pandemic. And importantly, these aren't just good intentions and false promises. In the past 12 months, a third of US travelers have made conscious decisions to turn off air, heating and lighting when not in a room, brought their own reusable water bottle and engaged in activities that supported the local community. And 48% got annoyed if a destination prevented them from acting sustainably for instance, not providing recycle uh, bins. There's so much that the island has to offer to these highly desirable travelers, from the bioluminescent bay, right, which might be a draw to that eco-friendly traveler or a nature lover, to the local rum tastings, which could be a bonding experience or a cultural learning experience. The conscientious traveler really is a perfect fit for Puerto Rico. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. You did a beautiful job of explaining and, and diluting in a very short amount of time how we're, we're going after this important audience. We also are continuing to oversee all of the COVID-19 messaging that informs our website travel advisory, consumer Q&A, and our MICE materials as usual. We're also closely monitoring the latest developments regarding the Delta variant, uh, as Alicia just shared, and continuing to share safe travel practices like social distancing and mask wearing along with all of our entry requirements. And to expand our efforts in both the luxury and culinary spaces, we've recently participated in the 2021 Food and Wine Classic in Aspen, September 10th through the 12th. It brought together all of the top food and beverage journalists, influencers, brands, and industry experts. And Discover Puerto Rico was a premier exhibitor making a really big splash with a dedicated media event and a prime spot in the Grand Tasting Pavilion. We partnered with top Puerto Rican chef Mario Pagan to create tastings and signature cocktails, which were received with massive excitement from both the attendees and journalists. And as part of that Food and Wine Classic, Discover Puerto Rico hosted that, that media event for over 40 attendees from a variety of publications, including CNN, Travel and Leisure, USA Today, the Associated Press, Food and Wine, and a variety of local publications there in Aspen. 
During the event, we highlighted the culinary and cocktail offerings of the island, including Puerto Rican rum, notably our partner Don Ku, and shared more about what the DMO is doing to facilitate the recovery of hospitality and tourism, as well as future initiatives like diversity and inclusion. As part of our continued efforts to connect with and attract the LGBTQ plus audience, Puerto Rico for the first time ever was represented with a significant presence at IGLTA or the International Gay and Lesbian Travel Association Conference in Atlanta earlier this month, partnering with our friends at Hospitable Me. One of the major objectives of this partnership is demonstrated allyship with LGBTQ plus community members, while at the same time positioning the island as a premier LGBTQ plus destination. In doing this, we one day uh, hope that we're able to host this important event in Puerto Rico. And to deliver against this objective, we worked with R&R partners to develop a full scale LGBTQ plus campaign that was revealed uh, publicly at IGLTA. We also announced a new Pathway to Employment Plan. This is a program designed in partnership with Hospitable Me and the IGLTA Foundation and is going to be implemented with the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau and Hyatt Hotels Corporation. The initiative creates a blueprint to hospitality employment for trans, queer, and non-binary presenting people and seeks to address the unique challenges they face in finding safe workplaces and getting hired. This project will provide education and resources for human resource professionals and job seekers to better connect the local hospitality industry with a more diverse community. And through all of our unique programs during this challenging year from virtual campaigns and constant COVID messaging, Discover Puerto Rico has continued to adapt and challenge the expectations of a DMO now leading the charge in the region and the country's recovery. Without strong leadership from Brad, many of our successes from the past year and our current recovery would not have been possible. Brad was recently honored as the State Tourism Director of the Year by the U.S. Travel's National Council of State Tourism Directors at this year's ESTO conference. This is the first time ever that Puerto Rico has been honored with this award. Under Brad's leadership, we've handled multiple crises and emerged stronger and more resilient than ever, as shown by the island's recent record-breaking numbers. Through earned media efforts around this landmark achievement, we garnered over 1.3 million impressions in key travel publications like Travel Weekly, Meetings Alliance, top travel blogs like Travel Vertical, and a podcast interview on the Travel Pulse podcast. To showcase Puerto Rico's easy access as a fly and drive destination, we also recently hosted a virtual road trip for U.S. and regional media from key markets. We also invited international media from Canada, the U.K., Germany, and Spain who aren't able to travel to the island quite yet in order to get a close look at what's new and what's yet to come. The virtual experience highlighted the history of Puerto Rico by making stops that pointed to the diversity and richness of Puerto Rican culture and how visitors can experience history in movement while traveling throughout the island. It also teased San Juan's upcoming 500th anniversary as a timely news angle and an important milestone. The virtual uh, trip was a really big success with 58 media in attendance. And as in-person meetings become more prevalent, we are creating a presence at most of the major meetings presenting Discover Puerto Rico as a thought leader in the travel and tourism space. We recently attended IPW. It just wrapped up this week, which was a great way for us to connect with trade, media, and other industry members to learn from them and also share our successes. As part of our efforts to position Discover Puerto Rico as leaders in the space, we secured a press conference for Brad, which highlighted the past year for the DMO, including our learnings in crisis preparedness and recovery efforts, our trailblazing efforts in creating the recovery roadmap, and some recent campaigns and goals for the upcoming year. We also conducted one-on-one -on -one meetings with over 20 journalists from around the world, including key markets like the UK, Canada, Germany and Spain. To capitalize on our unique cocktail culture, we celebrated National Rum Month in August to highlight one of our most famous exports. 
We were building on momentum from National Pina Colada Day and conducted media outreach to national and regional outlets highlighting the island's rich rum history. We pitched angles around rum sustainability, history, and rum experiences to top lifestyle, consumer, and trade media like Forbes, Condé Nast Traveler, and Food and Wine. But of course, experiencing the island firsthand is key to developing those strong relationships with media and helping them create informative and intriguing coverage. As we've seen significant interest from reporters who are ready to begin traveling again, we created a plan to bring key media to the island to experience everything we have to offer. We've created multiple trips, each focused on distinct parts of the island that are going to run throughout the year. Cocktail culture is key when we're discussing Puerto Rico's distinctive food and beverage offerings. We've recently hosted the Manuel and freelancers contributing to Forbes and travel and leisure for an exploration of the island's rum and cocktail history. Media visited rum distilleries and spoke with local mixologists and learned about how the Puerto Rican rum industry is becoming more sustainable. And of course, we celebrated the official opening of Distrito T-Mobile by inviting top tier media from Condé Nast Traveler, Forbes, Fodor's Travel, USA Today, Connect, and Corporate Event News to experience it firsthand. They not only attended the grand opening of the state of the art complex, but they also got a behind the scenes VIP tour of Distrito T-Mobile. They enjoyed world-class dining from some of the island's most talented chefs. And of course, a surprise concert from superstar Luis Fonsi. And to keep our water activities top of mind as the mainland transitions into fall and winter, Discover Puerto Rico hosted media contributing to Matador Network, Travel Awaits, and Wide Open Spaces for a seas-focused fam. The journalists experienced multiple municipalities like Rincon, Cabo Rojo, and Lajas, which contributes to our increasing non-metro coverage numbers. And Puerto Rico is celebrating the 500th anniversary of the founding of Old San Juan, as we all know, with special events now through June 2022. And we'll be supporting and amplifying these efforts through a dedicated landing page on our website, which houses all of the content related to the anniversary, itineraries and articles, a Google map component to pinpoint San Juan's landmarks, a San Juan directory featuring businesses, attractions and landmarks, and so much more, just a portion of which you see listed here. And to continue that celebration of the 500th anniversary and highlight our unique cultural roots, we hosted media contributing to El Diario, New York, Voters Travel and Lonely Planet to the island for a fam focused on San Juan and its history. Journalists experienced museums, a bomba class, culinary offerings, and the San Juan Town Squares, which were hosting activities to celebrate the 500th anniversary. We have several upcoming trips focused on topics like the island's architecture, the southeastern coast, and the west coast coming up. Upcoming moments and events to leverage, such as passport free travel, romantic getaways that kick off to fall travel, National Hispanic Heritage Month, Coffee Day, among many others, uh, continue to be pursued proactively to garner coverage that continues to increase the awareness and consideration for Puerto Rico. Our current media investment is funded by CDBG, CDBGDR Tranche 2. At the end of August, we launched both Spot TV and OTT campaigns, including a rolling launch of our digital program. Media flighting of this investment will run until the end of January 2022. Our strategy for CDBGDR is a build off of performance learnings from the first round of CDBGDR investments prioritizing awareness and midterm bookings. The focus is really on encouraging visitation to municipalities outside of San Juan. And here's just a quick look at some of the creative that is in rotation currently. This creative mix is about 40% inspiration and 60% health and safety. And here's a quick look at the list of markets that are receiving media investment from that CDBG DR investment at this time. And when we look at website performance, we're seeing decreases across the board month over month, which is expected as we ran a very low level media effort during August. With the ramp up now of CDBGDR at the end of the month, we do expect these numbers, of course, to rebound. 
And looking at the numbers year over year, however, we can see that the website is performing exceptionally well from a site health standpoint. As of August, we have now had nearly 850,000 referrals to tourism businesses and points of interest around the island. And in MICE marketing, we're also using our recent meeting planner focus group takeaways to update the meetings pages on our website. One of the most discussed requests in these focus groups was the ability to create custom maps showing the convention center and area hotels. We're going to be working with a company called Threshold 360 to create these maps along with 360 videos for venues and hotels with significant meeting space. On September 9th through the 12th, in partnership with Caribe Hilton, we hosted the prestigious PCMA Foundation Partnership Summit on the island. The event brought over 100 attendees that included top supplier and meeting planner executives. This event highlight, highlighted the Caribe Hilton, Distrito T-Mobile, and Museo de Arte de Puerto Rico, and included several offsite excursions in a CSR project that really showcased our destination. We also had an amazing showcase of the destination at Connect Marketplace in Tampa, August 23rd through the 25th. At the Hacienda Puerto Rico booth, we served over 1,100 coffees. Our sales team conducted approximately 120 appointments with planners and hosted a client event with more than 20 clients in attendance. And on stage at the closing general session to an audience of approximately 2,000 people, Brad announced that Connect is headed to Puerto Rico May 22nd through the 24th, 2022. We shared uh, an amazing announcement video, which received really, really great feedback. And many attendees how, uh, expressed how excited they are to head to the island next May. So we're going to share that video with you now. Welcome to the paradise. Fun. Sun pours down upon your face. I wake up, feel heavenly. Out of bed, I start to taste the sound that the record play in your hands. In my hands, letting go of everything else. All I wanna know is this. A big thanks to uh, Deborah Cohen, our Director of Meeting and Convention Marketing, and, and JP and our uh, awesome multimedia team internally for, for putting that together. And finally, um, Discover Puerto Rico's investment of the American Rescue Plan, or ARP funds, are going to be applied to programs and initiatives that are keenly designed to achieve strategic objectives that are formulated to stabilize the island's economy through tourism, 
and drive visitor powered employment and revenue to new records, laying the foundation for yet another amazing success story. So on Tuesday, October 5th, we ask that you join uh, Governor Pierre Luisi along with Roger Dow, the president and CEO of US Travel and Brad, of course, as they address this historic moment for Puerto Rico's tourism industry. And then I will follow up with the DMO's approach to the strategic investment of ARP funds and the opportunities that lie ahead for us. So with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to our Chief Sales Officer, Ed Carey. Thank you, Leah, and good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. As you know, we've been monitoring uh, meeting planner sentiment consistently during the pandemic, as well as throughout the recovery period. So I just wanted to briefly discuss the latest North Star survey, as well as uh, sales production results and, and trends. And then Francisco Blanche will bring you up to speed on our latest uh, leisure sales initiatives. <clears throat> but before I do that, I know Leah briefly discussed the PCMA Partnership Summit, and, and I just wanted to give a shout out and a big thank you to our services team as well as our hotel and DMC partners who really made the island shine at this event earlier this month. From the impactful CSR event to the extraordinary performance at the Museo de Arte, we were able to share the joy and excitement of the 500th anniversary celebration with everyone who was present. And during this entire event, there was one thing that we think became very clear no one in the meeting planning community wants to go backwards. And the power of in-person meetings, live interactions, and networking is stronger than ever. It is certainly true that meeting planners acted very quickly when the concerns over the Delta variant became widespread. Nearly one out of three meeting planners claimed to have rescheduled their meetings in that six week period from mid-July to late August. And many planners actually claimed to be less optimistic about a quick recovery. Nearly one out of every three meeting planners claims to have rescheduled their meetings in that six week period. And 70% are facing the reality that we will be dealing with this for some time to come. But at the same time, a major event services company, some of you may know called the Freeman Group came out with an important study that showed that large events were actually safer than many everyday life activities. Infection rates at major live events were less than those within the general population. They, and they looked at several different types and sizes of events all across the nation and found this to be true. And one of the biggest reasons was somewhat obvious. The average vaccination rates at these events was 80%. And that speaks directly to the protocols that were implemented by meeting planners and all of us in the events community. And so meeting planners know they need to keep moving forward and they can do it safely. Despite all of the bad news, 66% or two thirds of the meeting planning community still plan to hold their meetings in the last quarter of this year and into 2022, early 2022. In Puerto Rico, our lead activity remains strong. In early August, we were concerned that the activity versus 2019 had begun to level off due to the Delta variant. However, the second half of August and the first part of September have rebounded nicely, and we remain well over 2019 levels. And what's really encouraging is that our team and our hotel partners closed more business in the first two months of this fiscal year than we did in 2019. And we found it interesting that although the number of confirmed events was actually down, the average size of these groups was larger, which resulted in that 16% increase in, in booked room nights over 2019. Not exactly what we expected from looking at nationwide trends, but positive nonetheless. And our pipeline of business continues to grow. At 476,000 rooms, we have a solid base with which to focus on both the short-term need periods, as well as our continued focus on pushing that booking window beyond the two-year timeframe. 
We have four major events on island before the end of the year, including the Conference Direct CEO Summit, which is being hosted at the Royal Senesta in Isla Verde. We have two destination experience FAM trips and the Meetings Made Easy FAM. And we're very excited to be out on the road again with two major road shows in the Northeast, which is this coming week, and the Midwest. Our trade show schedule is extremely busy in the month of October. We're attending several shows focused on important sectors like medical, technology, sports, and financial. And we're excited to get back into Canada for the Canadian Meetings and Events Expo. In fact, between now and the end of the year, we will be attending or hosting 35 events in the MICE space alone. And we're also extraordinarily active in the leisure marketplace as well. So I'll turn it over to Francisco to bring you up to speed there. Thank you, Ed, and good morning, everyone. We're continuing to focus on the booking trends of our key partners and are actively supporting that growth with ongoing co-op activities. It's encouraging to see the results of our co-op with ABC CCRA leading the consortia production of GDS channels. As reflected in our weekly tracking, we've seen a huge shift in ABC in the course of 2020. And as of a few weeks ago, ABC surpassed American Express to position themselves at the forefront on productivity of the 300 plus Puerto Rico hotels that receive business from this partner via the GDS channel. We can also see activity by a lot of agents in global distribution channels that has strengthened considerably. On the wholesale side on VAX positioning, we maintain a driving presence in this platform, which travel agent audience has grown in the past 18 months. And while we remain in a short booking window pattern, it's really encouraging to see Puerto Rico not only within the top 10 most booked destinations, but also number four, ahead of Aruba, Jamaica, and Nassau, and also Hawaii and Miami. We attended Virtuoso Travel Week consistent with our strategy, continue to attend events where we are able to showcase the destination in multiple venues within the event. We had well over hundred appointments in the Puerto Rico track, adding to the ones of the participating properties and a large number of agents attending additional meetings at our destination lounge. And of course, those we celebrated at our appreciation dinner event. Let's take a quick look at the feedback we received from the most recent Virtuoso survey. Our partnership with Virtuoso thrives in reaching more than 20,000 advisors the world over. Best of all, there has been a dramatic jump in new business, leaving rescheduling and cancellations way in the past. In this four-year comparative, we see the efforts made by the hotels, and the ongoing co-op activity with Virtuoso, Signature, ABC, CCRA, Internova, Travel Savers, and so many more, it's paying off. The first quarter to third quarter year to date totals in 2021 exceeded each quarter in 2019. Sales and revenue figures reflected in this report are for preferred and non-preferred properties. This data comprises more than 35 Puerto Rico hotels sold through sources such as DMCs, bed banks, and wholesalers, as well as direct hotel bookings. Third quarter is still running, and we expect September to close with a very healthy boost, adding to existing totals for the quarter, hopefully surpassing them. We're also delivering advanced bookings for festive and 2022's first quarter. What we see in our recovery trends is August results exceeding June and July in the recovery process. September has begun really strong and remains strong. However, despite a weak October, we're pacing well for November and December, perhaps beginning to break that short-term booking pattern that we have seen during the recovery period. We attended the ASTA convention again, participating in multiple activities to promote the destination from every possible angle. The education session where Ed spoke to the importance of providing knowledge to the travel advisors and shared the positive results and appreciation for their support. We had a lunch and learn session with full attendance and a very engaging question and answer session. The advocacy dinner providing ASTA further support as they have been an amazing partner for Puerto Rico. And of course, the trade show 
with sponsored coffee break and holding very good meetings with agents and many ASTA chapter leaders from all over the United States. At the convention closing general session, Ed also was interviewed and spoke to the greatness of all we have to offer. At the close of August, we have reached 2021 enrollments and surpassed previous year's graduations. Our Puerto Rico travel expert loyalty is the newest add-on. Uh, we first want to note that at the close of August, we had already surpassed the two previous years totals. Um, we are upgrading the platform to feature the loyalty program, which will now enable our expert advisors to book more of Puerto Rico while enticing new enrollments and graduation. This will help in many ways. It will make us competitive against Caribbean and Florida destinations that have had this feature for a long time. It'll help us maintain a strong loyalty program where properties can actually participate. Maintain and further a strong loyalty uh, program to redeem points. And we learn from their enters that each booking channel, they utilize the most to determine who are the top producers. With a new flight from Austin to San Juan nonstop, we will be working with American Airlines Vacations in this inaugural with a fan trip. We will follow up after the fan trip with an event in Austin where the hotels will be invited to co-host. And then we will have in December a roadshow covering Dallas, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. On the international partnerships, we keep targeting activities in key markets. We just returned from Colombia where we conducted webinars for more than 600 agents in Barranquilla, Bogota, Cali, and Medellin. We're targeting Mexico and Latin America feeder markets with Copa and Avianca vacation programs and with local agency networks and consortia. We just participated, as Leah mentioned, in IPW where we had three tracks of appointments with more than 150 accounts attending. And as you can see in our leisure activities, we have a very thorough and consistent calendar um, where many of the uh, activities that have recently taken place, we will reflect in the next industry update. Thank you so much for your attention today. And now I leave you with Xiomara Rodriguez, Communications Director for Discover Puerto Rico. Thank you, Francisco, and thanks to our executive leadership team and our special guest, Sarah McFarland, for such great information and insight. If you have questions for our speakers, you can put them in the Q&A box. And in the time that we have left, we will answer as many questions as we can. Before we get started, I want to let you know that we will not be able to offer the translation feature during the Q&A session. So this portion will be in English only. Also, as I mentioned earlier, this webinar is being recorded, so you may replay it at your convenience or share it with colleagues who are not able to tune in today. In addition, my email is on the screen. Feel free to reach out to me if after the webinar you have questions or need any additional information, I'll be happy to assist you. Lastly, I wanna remind you that at the end of today's webinar, a survey will appear on your screen. We wanna continue providing you with information on the topics that are most relevant to you. So please feel free to uh, fill out the survey. We wanna hear from you. A nuestros amigos que están utilizando nuestro servicio de traducción, no vamos a poder ofrecer la función de subtítulos en esta sección, así que la misma será solamente en inglés. También, como mencioné antes, este seminario web está siendo grabado y más tarde esta semana le haremos llegar el enlace con la grabación para que puedan repasar el contenido a su conveniencia o compartirlo con algún colega que no haya podido estar presente el día de hoy. En pantalla están viendo mi correo electrónico. Pueden anotarlo y si al finalizar este seminario web tienen dudas, preguntas o necesitan alguna información adicional, pueden comunicarse conmigo a través del mismo. También, por último, les recuerdo que al finalizar aparecerá una encuesta en su pantalla. La misma nos ayudará a continuar ofreciendo información relevante sobre temas de interés a nuestra industria. Por favor, participen de la encuesta. Queremos escuchar sus opiniones. While you guys put your questions in the Q&A box, eh, I want to remind you that if you have not registered to our industry portal to receive a weekly newsletter and the weekly research dashboard, please go ahead and head over to discoverpuertorico.com slash industry. 
And if you need assistance during the sign-up process, please reach out to our digital team. They will assist you. Also be on the lookout for the invite to our next industry update, which will be next Wednesday, October 20th at 10 a.m. This will be a hybrid meeting and you can attend in person or watch online. The registration link will be sent out soon. So it looks like we have one question here. Um, I can answer this. Do we still uh, have to ask guests to fill out the travel declaration form uh, when they come in? And that is correct. And uh, I believe that it's also being collected by the health department on lodging. So yes, uh, guests have to continue filling out that information. Um, Brad, we have a question on the chat here as well. Um, what are you doing to increase uh, tourism for locals? So um, by law, the responsibility of promoting tourism to locals lies with the Puerto Rico Tourism Company. And that was made very clear, not only in the law that was passed back in 2017, but also our contract with the tourism company. So any promotion of tourism locally, targeting local travels lies with them. Now that said, our team worked closely with the tourism company. As you may or may not know, they're included not only on our board of directors, but also in our marketing committees, our sales committees. There's a regular ongoing of cadence of communications and meetings, uh, which the tourism company is invited to regularly, uh, not only Carlos Mercado, the director, but uh, some of the support staff that make a lot of the day-to-day -day decisions. And uh, what people often don't realize perhaps is that our multimedia team led by JP Polo uh, provides content, which of course is available to you at the business level, but also to the tourism company. So occasionally you'll see some of the materials that we've created being used in their local campaigns. But to be clear, the responsibility for promoting tourism uh, in the local market to local residents uh, lies with the tourism company. Thank you, Brad. Um, I have another question and uh, possibly Brad or Lee, I can answer this. Uh, how can local students can participate or volunteer in exposing our island in conventions through Discover Puerto Rico? So um, as far as uh, one aspect, I don't think this is a specific question, but I will mention there's the Student Youth Travel Association, which our chief marketing officer, Leah Chandler, is involved in. Uh, typically, that involves more student travel from students from the United States coming here, or local students going uh, off island. In fact, I think Leah and the team that she works with there actually arranged a very special trip for some local students to go to our nation's capital in Washington uh, pre-pandemic. So that's a part of our ongoing marketing efforts. As far as volunteering to participate in local events, um, we haven't had a lot of that, but certainly uh, we would welcome the opportunity to engage anyone that's interested, especially as we look at some of these events that are coming over the next couple of years. We'll be hosting uh, probably the most prominent board meeting in the travel industry. The United States Travel Association will, bringing its, will be bringing its board of directors meeting to Puerto Rico uh, in 2022, uh, the Connect Marketplace event that um, uh, Ed was talking about earlier and that Leah shared the video from, uh, those are also gonna be extraordinary opportunities for our island to market itself. So if you're a student or a young professional and you're interested in not only getting into the industry, but growing the industry, these will be opportunities to meet some of the key movers and shakers in our industry and professionals that are creating a lot of jobs and careers. So I would encourage you if you're interested in volunteering for uh, any of these events, reach out to our office. Uh, you can certainly email Siamara, whose email is on the screen. Uh, you can also uh, re can communicate through our um, information email. I believe it's info at discoverpuertorico.com. And we'll be happy to try to find a way to use your talents uh, as we welcome visitors to the island. Thank you, Brad. Uh, that's all the questions that we have today. Thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you on the next one.